Welcome to the online service. We pray that you receive from God today. It's the right time to be together right now. This is the perfect time to just sit back, open your spirit to God, join us in praise, and make connection with God today. He loves you. He loves your fellowship, and He wants to hear your heart in this time right now. As we praise Him, remember, there's, there's nothing, nothing that our that God, God can't, can't do. do. Praise the 
We certainly need to believe that we are who God says that we are. That's right. And often we have to really listen to him so that we know exactly what scripture is quickening or what he's saying to us by his spirit. Yeah. And right now, let's open our heart to God. We're going to pray. We're going to talk to God. We're going to talk to Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit come on your life right now. If you need mm -hmm. healing or if you've been standing on the scriptures for healing, this is your time yeah. to allow the power of God to meet that need and cancel it out. In the Bible, there's a prayer that asks God to reward the work of faith with power. And that's the power that's going to be available for you right now. I want to pray for people that need freedom from fear and confusion. You know, we are in a world right now that is throwing all sorts of things at us. And as we approach the future, there will be decisions that we have to make. Do I get the vaccine? Do I not get the vaccine? Is it my saviour or is it going to kill me? You know, we need to know from God for each of us as individuals of what he is saying to us. We need to trust God, have faith that he can lead us. He can guide us. So I stand against all fear, all confusion. And I declare we will know the will of God as we approach every decision that we have to make. So, Father, as we open our hearts mm. to you today, we're just praying for the work of your spirit yes, in all of our lives right now. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that the love of God is poured into our hearts mm. by the Holy Spirit and that perfect love casts out all fear. Lord, we thank you yes, that you are the provider. You are the one who said, I promise you a good future, great plans, that you be blessed and be a blessing. And we pray today, Father, mm. for us and for each of our viewers and all of us participating mm. in this online service for the work of your spirit, for Thank supernatural you. assurance, for your overflowing love, your glory and the manifestations of your spirit right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we receive that, Lord. And I pray for people that really need a fresh touch from God. You're feeling a bit weary. You've been serving, but almost from a sense of obligation. I pray, Father, for people in that situation that they would receive fresh revelation from your throne room, that they would be revived, Lord God, on the inside as they receive fresh vision. And Father, that they would serve from a place of loving you and loving people. Thank you, God. Touch them by the power of your spirit, Lord. And Father, we pray today that you would strengthen each one of us by mm. the power of your spirit in the inner man, yes, that Lord. Christ may dwell in our hearts yes, by Lord. faith, mm. that we being rooted and grounded in love may comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the length, and to know the love of God, Thank which you, passes knowledge. Yes, Thank you, Lord, for that strengthening. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for the eye-opening revelation of your spirit. I'm praying for somebody right now has been undergoing that severe sinus attack and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command it to stop and I call the pain yeah. out of there, mm. the inflammation you, and all the histamine reactions and the sneezing or the soreness, the blocking up. In Jesus' Go name, I command name it to be completely free right now in Jesus' name. And I pray for the liver once again, Lord, that you would touch that person that has a liver complaint Father, I pray for restoration of the liver right now in the name of Jesus. Liver, be restored. Be whole in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for somebody who's been walking with a limp. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that limp. It could be several people. One of them has a problem in the hip area, just limping a bit because the hips don't work properly. And in Jesus' name, we command all of that seizing up to cease for the hips to work properly. For others today mm. with pain Thank down Lord. the leg or sciatica pain, I rebuke that pain. I bind that spirit of pain and I loose it from your body Thank and I declare Lord. all limping name. ceases right now in the name of Jesus. And for someone, it's a problem in the knee, with the knee, and I just declare healing and wholeness in that knee right now in the name of Jesus. Every ligament, every tendon, everything that's gone wrong there, be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. An ankle, receive strength, all ankle bones and ligaments there, be put back into the right place 
every bone in your foot be straightened up and Thank you, put Lord. into the right location in Jesus' name. No more limping. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we stand against all digestive complaints today and all issues to do with the duodenum and to do with the small intestine and the stomach. We just declare over all digestive Thank issues you, right now that the power of God is at yeah. work, that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus Thank you, Lord. and that you're walking in all the fullness of God's plan for your body. Body, we command you to work properly in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I pray for someone with a problem in their eyes. I just declare, Lord God, healing of the eyes. Whatever that problem is, Father, that you would bring healing right now in Jesus' name. Eyes be healed, restored. Cataracts, gone in Jesus' name. Glaucoma, gone in the name of Jesus. Someone with been getting a headache right across from one temple to the other, right across through there. I just pray over that person right now and I just bind Thank up that Lord. spirit of pain, Thank all Lord. that headache to cease yeah. right through the back of the eyes and in the name Thank of Thank Jesus, Lord. that whatever the cause of that is, we remove it, we shut it down and we Thank declare you. they are Jesus perfectly name. and completely restored yep. and healed today Thank you in Lord. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive it right now. Receive it through your body for whatever the symptoms we've mentioned or any other issues right now. Receive healing. Healing, healing in your ears. Healing in your liver as Rosanna prayed. Healing for the kidneys. Healing for all the digestive tract. Healing for the limbs and any area of pain in your body now. We command that pain to cease and desist. Somebody with a pain up around the shoulders and right mm. into the neck Thank area, Lord. we command Heal that to cease and that complete peace Heal would come into their physical the body as well as into their soul and their Thank spirit you, in Jesus' name. Let it be, Lord. And as we open our hearts to God in worship today, mm. we are praying today, Father, for the revelation of all that you're wanting to get through to us. And Lord, that you would speak, washing us with the word of God, that we might grow into the maturity of the sons of God and fully become the glorious church for which you are returning in Jesus' name. You know, he is worthy of all the honour. He's worthy mm. of all the praise. So let's continue to open our heart to him, give him the glory as we sing, Holy, Holy. Blah! 
every day is a new day. It is totally unused and ready to walk into with a fresh attitude, fresh ideas and renewed excitement. This is the beginning of a new day, leaving the past behind. This is the beginning of a new day, my destiny to find. We should approach it with great expectation of what it will bring. Regardless of what happened the day before, we can get it right the next day. We may have made mistakes yesterday, but we can get it right today. God's mercies are new every morning. He has a covenant of compassion towards us. His mercy is His compassion toward us even when we mess up. He continues to love us and that is something to rejoice about every day. Start the morning right. Declare that it is a new day and set things in a positive frame of mind. Do not let the enemy steal your joy or distract you with negativity before you even get started. Declare that the enemy will not steal, kill or destroy because Jesus came that you would have life and you are choosing to walk in that truth. Declare that the enemy will not steal, kill and destroy because Jesus came that you would have life and you are choosing to walk in that truth. God has made a way for you to enjoy life to the full, then choose life. Don't let the enemy remind you of all the bad choices you have made yesterday or yesteryear for that matter. Don't waste time complaining about the past or worrying about the future. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Cast your cares upon God because He cares about you. He cares for you. That's when the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. Continue to focus on the good things, things of good report. Don't miss all the good things happening around you. Don't let today pass you by. Pay attention to people around you. Build relationships. Avoid future regrets. Use every day to build something important for the future. Enjoy each day. It is the journey that counts. person that we become while endeavouring to reach our goals is what counts. Life will not always seem fair to us as we are living out our journey, but we must remember that we are only seeing things through our eyes. 
Sometimes we just have to learn from a negative experience and keep moving forward without it entering our heart. When we are immersed in the problem, it can seem worse than it actually is. So take a step back and see things in perspective. Remember, you are an overcomer. Whatever comes against you, you can overcome it. You only live once, so face your fears as you are confronted with them. Don't let them paralyze you. They are just a part of your overcoming journey. Trust in God. Declare His faithfulness, especially in your trials and tempting times. Enter each day expecting God to lead you and help you in every situation. He is with you. He loves you. He hears you. He is faithful. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. There is a sound. I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Oh, awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. There is a sound that changes things, the sound of his people on their knees. Oh, wake up, you slumbering, it's time to worship him. Praise the Lord. 
loud, sing his praise aloud. Oh, awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Joining Jesus's On The Job Apprenticeship. I'm reading today from Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20 in the New King James Version. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, surnamed Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting or throwing a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Let's pray. Father, as we open your word, we're asking you for your spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened, might be flooded with light, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And Father, that as we go through today, we pray that you would reveal the truth that's revealed in these scriptures right into our lives and our hearts and impart to us the grace needed to be able to do what you're calling us to do in Jesus name. Amen. So as we're talking about Jesus's on the job training or on the job apprenticeship, this is a, an amazing picture. And today we're going to look at four steps we can see out of these scriptures that bring us to fullness, to maturity, and fully fulfilling the call of God, God's assignment, and all of his anointing and responsibilities for us. So I believe that today, if we look honestly at God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, by the time this online service has finished, we will leave here knowing the steps into the fullness of God's call and assignment and then on into his eternal rewards. So this is a message about salvation, but it's more than that. You know, salvation may be likened to getting the car door open, but that's only the first step to learning how to drive. Amen. It's when you get into the car. It's like when you get into Christianity, but then you've got to drive to the destination. And in our case, it's the destination of God's planning. It's related to his calling. He said to Ezekiel, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. There was an intimacy. And it's almost like we see the picture of that. God breathes us into existence and we come as a spirit being and join that embryo in the womb and we grow into a person born onto this earth and we live our life here. And when we finish, we go back to God and complete that divine cycle. And it's just like he said about his word. No word of God is void of power. The word that I speak goes forth from my lips. It shall not return to me unless it achieves that which it was sent to do. And we've all been sent to do something. We've been given a personality, born in a location. We've grown up in a certain place. The devil's worked against it, but God always had in mind an assignment, an objective to do with bringing all of this created reality back into right relationship with him and bringing it all under his kingdom dominion. Jesus, of course, our older brother has paved the way for us. And now as we follow him, we are fulfilling our individual assigned parts of Jesus' whole mission. Amen. So you have a part, I have a part, and your creation, your personality, your gifts, your calling, the whole mix of your talents is a perfect combination for you to fulfill what God had in mind when you were created. So what's number one today in the steps into this? is the calling, the learning contract. I'm going to read it again, different version. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. When he saw Simon, Peter and Andrew, he said to them, Come on, follow me, and I will make you competent at fishing for men. I see this as a learning contract because I was involved in the Bible college for a long time. And when we had prospective students, we would interview them and explain our learning contract. 
And what we said to them was all we could say was, if you pay us the fees, we'll present training and we'll give you assessment. And if you take full advantage of it, you can grow to competence or you could virtually make yourself competent through the training and the assessment we give you if you pay the fees and if you participate. Amen. But Jesus is miles ahead of anything we could do because he said, if you fulfill your part, which in his case was just simply follow me. And obviously from the context that involved leaving everything, you follow me and I will make you competent. We could never have said that, but Jesus can. So that's our first encouragement for each other today and mine for you. If you say yes to Jesus, if you follow him, he is your good shepherd. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Amen. If we fulfill that part of just following, giving him our faith, walking in the spirit, living a life of love, then he will work in your life, in my life and in anybody that will do this until he has brought you into that place of competence. This is great because it removes from us that sense of, I'm a failure. I can't do it. Everybody else is succeeding. I'm not. Jesus said he will make you competent. He didn't say follow me and make yourself competent. He said he will do it. So this is his learning contract, which involves an awesome, powerful and just almost beyond description promise of what he will do for us if all we do is follow. I'm going to read it now from the Amplified. Follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher and walking the same path of life that I walk and I will make you fishers of men. The Passion Translation again, Jesus called them and said, come on, follow me. I will transform you. Amen. It's Jesus that's doing it. And I love that. Of course, the illustration for this is number one, the Apostle Paul. He wasn't there by the Lake of Galilee. He didn't see Jesus in a physical body. But when Jesus encountered him on the road to Damascus, he immediately said, Who are you, Lord? He knew that the person he met that day was Lord. And Jesus said to him, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against, well, the goads, the prickles. And Paul said to him, what do you want me to do? And, you know, Jesus said, go into the town, it will be shown you. And then, of course, Jesus told him about his call to reach out to the Gentiles and the Jewish people that were scattered all around the place to preach the gospel to them. He explained that he would come under persecution, but that he would also speak to kings. And he did. He spoke to several kings in his life to governors and all kinds of amazing people and established churches in a lot of the known world. And that was the call of God on his life. And for me, I remember God didn't just call us in a band, but he called me personally. And I remember waking up every day and hearing that passage out of Matthew chapter 10, go two by two, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, freely you have received, freely give. And I remember that calling to go two by two. And so Rosanna and I have done that for the last, well, 38 or nine years. We've been going two by two, fulfilling that call, that ministry, that assignment. We've done it in music. We've done it in church planning. We did it in home groups. We've done it in Bible college. We've done it in pastoring, being associate pastors. And now we're pastoring. This is exactly what we've done the whole time. We've used whatever gifts God gave us and we've done our best to fulfill this call. But truly, from the shy background I came from, I could only say that Jesus made me competent. And as I stood on the word and as I kept going forward by faith, the fear of man gradually left. Praise the Lord. Another time I heard the call of God was in a preaching sermon by John Smith from the God Squad. And he was preaching that day. God needs preachers to preach the gospel. And he was preaching from Mark, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that doesn't believe will be lost. 
And I knew that day that God had called me to be a preacher. I started preaching every time a door opened. We started preaching in our concerts because we were doing concerts. Then we started a home group, started a second home group and started a youth group. I preached in all of them, concerts, home group, youth group, just all the time, preaching the gospel, believing for salvations and doing our best to see souls saved. Amen. So the first step into the fullness of God's call and assignment for you is the call and the learning contract. You say yes and follow. That's your part. Amen. The second step is the decision whether or not to leave everything to follow like we see with James and John and Peter and Andrew. So back to Matthew, he said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. It's the same with James and John. It's found in verse 21 of Matthew 4. And he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their net. He called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. I don't know if you can picture this, but you've got to always spare a thought for their father, Zebedee. He's in the boat. He has probably been fishing since his young life. He was married. He's raised up some sons and they're taking responsibility in the family business of fishing. And he's probably imagining now he can slow down a bit. He can retire. And then Jesus just walked past and called them to follow and they left him. And the hired servants had just went with Jesus. Zebedee must have thought, hang on, what's going on? Why are they following that guy? But they knew that this was their opportunity because they heard the voice of Jesus saying, follow me. Are you hearing that voice today? What about Levi? We looked at him previously. Levi, we found him in Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. After these things, he'd been teaching by the sea. He went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up and followed him. Rosanna and I had to leave a lot to follow Jesus because we started singing about Jesus in the hotels and nightclubs where we were employed to entertain their crowds. Well, it took about a year, but they realized after a while that we were no longer promoting what they were on about. We were the exact opposite and our work finished up. And then Christian concerts and our ministry took off. Amen. See, some people have rocks in their soil. Jesus said the seeds get in, they get all excited. But then when challenges come to stand on the word of God and to obey the word of God, they fall away because there's still a little bit of rebellion there. And things like give 10% as a tie, they, they rebel. Or forgive everyone that hurts you, they can't do it. Turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, do good to those that despitefully use you. Some people balk at these things, they can't do it. They take offense, rocks in their heart, they fall away. But if you're going to follow Jesus, You've got to count the cost from the beginning. You've got to leave everything, your old life, your old nature, your old hurts. You've got to leave it even today. You've got to make the decision. I'm letting go of the old. You know, Paul said it, forgetting that which has gone before and pressing on to that which is ahead. I'm born again today. I'm born again now. The old has gone. All things have become new. I forgive all others as God for Christ's sake has forgiven me and I'm following Jesus. If you keep your eyes eyes on Jesus, you won't sink in the storm. Amen. Some have themselves on the throne of their life. They hear about Jesus and they think it's great. Woo, Jesus. But they see Jesus as somebody who will answer their prayers, do their bidding, get things good for them, give them great success in life, bring them prosperity. And I'm not saying prosperity is of the devil, but what I'm saying is that having yourself on the throne of life is of the devil. And when those people actually realize that Jesus is the one who gives the commands and he will lead you out into the wilderness. He will take you through the valley of the shadow of death. They don't like it. They stop obeying Jesus, justify their rebellion for a while, but eventually fall away. So we don't want any of that. We want to serve Jesus. He is the King. He is the Lord. When he says jump, we say, 
How high? How fast? How often? Amen. When he says, follow me, we go. When he goes to the left, we go to the left. When he goes to the right, we go to the right. Paul the Apostle said, it's no longer I that live. He's saying, I'm not on the throne of my life. I don't even have the steering wheel of my life. It's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. And the life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ is Lord. And I see a day coming when we'll all fully understand this and we'll be walking in the Spirit, led by the Spirit, living by faith, overflowing love, fulfilling our call and our assignment. Collectively, we make the body of Christ, but as we fulfill our personal call and our assignment, Jesus, the head of this whole thing, knows what your part is. You don't even have to know what everybody else's part is. As long as you do your part, that's his job to know the whole overview. Amen. Woo he is a genius. Now we find in the Bible that when Jesus called some to follow, they didn't make the cut. Others called themselves to follow Jesus. Let's read some of these. The first one is found in Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 to 20. When Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side of the lake. And a certain scribe came and said to him, I should emphasize that differently, a certain scribe. Think about what a scribe's job is. It just means a writer, somebody who writes. They didn't have printing press then. That to copy out the Bibles by hand and all the books they had all copied out. That was his job. Where did he do his job? In a factory? No. Was he out in a farm paddock? No. Was he in a fishing boat? No. Where was he? He was sitting behind a desk. And I don't know about you, I've worked in offices and I do a lot of work behind a computer today, these days. And I know what it's like. We get our desk organized. We make sure we've got some natural light coming in somewhere you can give long focus to your eyes if possible. And you arrange everything perfectly there. And over here you've got this. You can put a cup of tea there or whatever you have. And you can make it very comfortable. You get the perfect chair and adjust the lumbar support. You get everything perfect. You've got your little nest. Amen. You've got your foxhole. Listen to what the scribe says. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Now, the I will in there should be a big warning bell because that's exactly what the devil said. I will ascend to the highs. I will be like the most high God. There's no evidence here of Jesus calling this man. He invented the call. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To me, that really speaks into the life of a scribe saying to him, you've got your little nest, you've got your place of work, you've got it all cozy, just exactly the way you like it. But if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to get into a rocky boat out on the water. And even though there is visible means of support, it's a very, very rocky situation crammed in together with a whole lot of Jesus's other followers, none of whom are fully mature, all crossing the lake and you're going to go through a storm and end up on the other side where there's a demonized man running out of the tombs, greatly intimidating. That's what it's like to follow me, Jesus is saying. It's not always about sitting at a desk. Now, I always say you need to sit behind the desk to do your quiet time, to have some fellowship. And some of you, your fellowship's online. I understand that. And we do a lot of things at our desk, but that's not the only place we got to be to follow Jesus. Amen. You've got to get out into the boat of some local church or something like that with other people and someone's always rocking the boat. Amen. And we all want them to sit down and be orderly, but there's someone rocking the boat and to really follow Jesus and fulfill his call. That's where you're going to have to be sometime and deal with some storms and deal with the thing tending to sink. You have to get to the other side, deal with the demonized, deal with the people kicking you out of the region. There's a lot more to following Jesus than having your own foxhole, your own nest, and having your beautiful scribe seat set up, ready to go. Amen. Another potential disciple. This is Matthew chapter 8, verses 21 to 22. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Now, when I first read this, I thought he was talking about 
Oh, I just got news my father died. I've got a whip home for the funeral, but I'll be back straight away after that. And then I couldn't understand why Jesus gave this response. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. This man was called by Jesus. But what does he mean, let the dead bury their own dead? Why did he want to go home and bury his father? Couldn't he go to his dad's funeral? Then I realized, of course, his father wasn't dead. This is about staying away from the call of God till his father dies. They sort out the inheritance. And when he's got his nest egg sorted out, then he follows Jesus. And Jesus is saying, that's not going to work because, you know, you put your hand to the plow and look back. You're not fit for the kingdom. Another said, Lord, I will follow you. Another one calling himself. But let me first go and bid farewell to those who are at my house. And I'm thinking, why? You can't even say, see you, mum. I might be home for tea. What is this? And then Jesus' response to him tells me that there's a lot more to it than a simple goodbye. What I really believe this is, that this one who called himself to follow Jesus wanted to keep all of his old lives relationships intact, keep everything sweet, make sure he hasn't offended anybody back there in the devil's kingdom so that if following Jesus doesn't work out, he's got something to fall back on. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to secure himself relationally. The other one tried to secure himself financially. Jesus' response to this one was this. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, He didn't even say going back. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. So nobody who follows Jesus and then thinks about, well, if this doesn't work out, what have I got back here to fall back on? If that's your attitude at the beginning, Jesus will say you've already lost because it's going to take a lot to follow him. Amen. It's going to take a lot of commitment, keeping your eyes on Jesus and going forward because there will be storms. There will be demonized people to deal with and you're going to have to make the quality decision. I follow Jesus. I live by the word of God. The word of God is first and final authority in all of my decisions. No matter what happens, where I go, what I do. If he says, sell, give the money to the poor, I sell. If he says, follow me to the other side, I go. If he says, walk away from here, I walk. Wipe off the dust, you wipe it off. Amen. If he says, don't worry about tomorrow, I don't worry. I follow him fully believing all of his promises and not trying to look back to my old life for financial or relational security or something to fall back on. Amen. So we see that in the Old Testament, Elijah threw his mantle on Elisha. Elisha instantly left everything, followed Elijah and ended up with a double portion of his spirit. In the New Testament, the rich young ruler, Jesus said to him, follow me. He said, go, sell what you have, give the money to the poor, come follow me. But he went away sad. (laughs) He went away sad and depressed. Why? Because he would not do it. He had more of his trust in his own personal wealth than in following Jesus. Amen. The apostle Paul had to leave his old job to follow Jesus. We had to do that. Our drug user friend got saved, gave up drugs, but he had to move out of his house and cut off all the old relationships because they were all drug users and dealers. He had to move out. He just had to disappear and look forward and never look back. Paul, the guitarist, he changed his house. He came and lived at our house. It did involve a loss of work for us, but the way open for us to do Christian concerts, and you can see that following Jesus is a major decision, not just once and then keep on with your old life with an extra little bit added. It's a major decision. Of course, it can change your employment. Of course, it can change your friendship structure. Of course, it can upset your family, but you've got to have your eyes on Jesus and keep going forward. Amen. The third step into the fullness of God's call and assignment for us is number three, the outcome. What's the outcome of all this following, going through all this training process? It's eternal significance and doing what Jesus did on earth. 
We must always remember one of the final things Jesus said before his ascension is found in John chapter 20, verse 21. It's part of his commission. And Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Amen. As the Father sent me, I also send you. So we don't look at the life of Jesus on earth and say, He's doing that because he's the son of God. Well, we are the sons of God once we're born again too. But we look at his life on earth and saying that's what he's training us to do. That's what he's calling us to do, to be just like Jesus. Amen. Be imitators of God as beloved children. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, Peter did what he saw Jesus do. And we see this once he's graduated from his traineeship, his apprenticeship. Jesus goes to heaven and sheds forth the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent them in the same way the Father sent him. And it's the same way he sends us. Amen. Jesus' disciples did what Jesus did. Acts chapter 5 verse 12 to 16. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they're all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. There's so much to say about this glorious church that Jesus is getting ready to take home when he returns. That's exactly what we'll be like. None of the others will be game to join because they will esteem us highly and understand that the glory of the Lord is overwhelming unless you're serious about following Jesus. And it says, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes. So Jesus had multitudes. Now the disciples trained by him, filled with the Holy Spirit, sent with the similar call, also are bringing multitudes, both of men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. You know, the Bible says of Jesus, he healed them all. Here we see it again, that all the sick people in the multitude were being healed. And I want to say it to you right now and to me and all of us, where they hear Jesus is, they will come. Multitudes will be drawn where they hear Jesus is at work and he's inside you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's let him out. Let's let him work through us like Peter did there and we will see the multitudes, we'll see the healing, the miracles, and may it be your shadow that touches people as you walk past them so that that glory cloud that's clothing you all around is enough to envelop them even as you walk past and bring healing to their lives. Amen. So as we accept this learning contract, keep walking with Jesus, not looking back. He will do the same in and through us. Salvation healings, crowds. Amen. So what have we learned today? There are steps into the fullness of God's call and assignment. Some people are called to business. Some people are called to be homemakers, raise a great family for Jesus. Others are called to work. Some are called into education. Some are called into the media. Some are called into the ministry. We're all called to different things. Some may even be called to be a soldier to go into the military. Some are called to be mathematicians, to be accountants. There are many different calls. Some are called to be apostles or prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, some musicians in the house of God. Some are called to be worship leaders. Some are called to be servers and servants. We all have a unique ability. And if we stay in our lane and if we flow with the gift and the call and the assignment God has for our life, We will be fulfilled in the here and now, even though we do go through trials, but in eternity, we will have eternal life. We'll be in the kingdom eating with Jesus. It's just going to be awesome and enjoying all the rewards. And Jesus spoke of mansions in heaven. Amen. And here it goes on to speak about ruling the nations with the rod of iron. So this is very, very exciting. So what should we do today? We should definitely Count the cost. Amen. We should leave all of the old life. Don't look back. Don't depend on it. 
don't have anything back there as a security to fall back on. And I've said this before and I'll keep saying it. When Abraham gave tithes, he gave tithes of everything and probably then continued to give tithes of his increase. It's very important to leave it all and to follow Jesus. Some people have to sell a house and give the money to the poor. Others may have to buy a house. There's lots of differences in our lives, but what's important is that we do what Jesus tells us to do and do it faithfully and do it completely. Amen. So today, maybe you haven't even made the first step of following Jesus. I'm going to read the gospel to you. This is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you. See, it's not complicated. Which you also received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ is just Jesus' title, one of his titles. That he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That he was seen by Peter, then by the twelve. And after that he was seen of over 500, including me. Amen. So what's it here? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried, proving he was dead. He stayed in the grave three days. He didn't just revive after a faint. And then he rose from the dead, proving that what he died to pay for was paid. He rose from the dead. He spent a little bit of time here on earth, was the Bible says another 40 days or so. Then he ascended to heaven. And then 50 days after he died and rose, the Holy Spirit flooded the church. And he's been here ever since, enabling us. Amen. And the Bible, as I read before, says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized, shall be saved. Why is baptism so important? Because Jesus said it. He said you should be baptized. And if he's really Lord of your life, you'll do everything you can to obey him. If you find yourself trying to talk yourself out of obeying this simple command to go in dry and come out wet, if you're trying to disobey that or justify disobedience, you've got to ask yourself, is Jesus really Lord? Have I really surrendered. And at the end of the day, it's a very simple test, isn't it? If people go and get baptized, we know at least they've made some steps to follow Jesus. If they balk at that, they haven't really made Jesus Lord to the point of being baptized. Now, we understand you may not be able to immerse yourself in water, but there are other ways you can be baptized. But it's the act of obedience that's important. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. And if you're ready for that today, if you're ready to surrender to Jesus, to obey him, to fulfill his call in your life, you're ready to be what he calls born again. You're ready to experience his life coming in and to be changed so radically by him that you can then see in his kingdom, follow him and start your process of discipleship and apprenticeship with Jesus today. So let's pray this prayer. I encourage you to pray it after me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I turn from my old life completely. Today, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Saviour. Today, Lord Jesus, I believe you rose from the dead. I confess that you are my Lord I declare that I will follow you as my good shepherd. I receive your new birth today. And I thank you that my name's in your book. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm born again right now. I am a new creation. My old life is gone. And I have a new life. And I have a new start right now in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now you relax. I want to pray for you. Father, I'm praying for everybody who said that prayer today and sincerely meant it, that you would flood their life with the true reality of the new birth, that they may be born again, 
see Jesus guiding them in their future by their insight, by the inner witness, being led by your spirit and fulfilling your call through your apprenticeship program and on into fulfilling their assignment in God in Jesus name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Remember to tell somebody today. So good that you could listen to me today. Today.